Thank you. Okay, so yeah, as Chavi said, uh, I'm going to be talking about object detection. So as uh, Elisa gave the talk about saliency, this is also a kind of an application of deep yeah. learning. So we're going to focus on applications kind of from now on, I think. So let's uh, dive into it. So, so far, apart from, plus, uh, from, from saliency, we've only seen deep nets that do classification. So they see images globally and they make a prediction for the entire image. But now this lecture is uh, meant to be for treating uh, Analyzing images locally and describing what's uh, in, in the image locally again, yeah. So this is ob what object detection is. It's actually the task of assigning a label and a bounding box to all objects uh, in an image. So the way that uh, you could address this, if you think about it, is to just treat object detection as a classification problem, where you have an image and you have your set of classes that you want to find, and you just basically you just pick a region or a bounding box, you put it somewhere in the image, and you evaluate the classifier there. So you see, okay, here, is there a cat, is there a dog, is there a duck? None of those, right? So you just move forward, you move the only box someplace else, and you do that again, still no luck. So we move again, we find something. You could do this on and on and on, and you soon realize that you have to do this, not only for that bounding box everywhere in the image, but for many bounding boxes in, uh, in different scales and, and aspect ratios. So uh, the solution to this is, well, okay, you could do that if your classifier is fast enough and your features are fast enough to compute. Um, which is actually what people did before the deep learning era. So here in this work, uh, there's this um, descriptor is called histogram of oriented gradient. So people use that, they compute that in the whole image at different scales, and then they just slide a uh, sliding window there at different scales uh, as well in different positions, and they would evaluate a classifier at each location. So that was really fast because the classifier is linear and because this feature is fast to compute. So that worked very well in practice. There's also this uh, other work that is actually based on the same features, so uh, histogram of oriented gradients. But here, the objects and the classifiers are uh, based off uh, different parts, so it's called the formable part model. So uh, this way, they would uh, be able to find objects that are maybe partially occluded or in different positions on, and scales. So that worked, again, very well in 2010. But now we have uh, deep nets, right? So deep nets are not classifiers that are fast to compute, and the features are expensive to compute as well. So what can we do here? So the answer would be, okay, we have all these options and we have all these pixels to look with this, uh, all these bounding boxes. The idea is that we choose a subset and we choose it in a smart way so that we can just evaluate in a tiny subset of those locations. So there are some uh, algorithms for that which are called vision proposal algorithms. So the idea here is that you have an image and then you run this algorithm and it will give you a set of locations or a set of regions in that image that are likely to contain uh, the objects. Okay, so this, you go from maybe a million uh, chances or a million uh, possible locations and bounding boxes for, and to maybe like 2,000, which is much better if you need to treat that amount of data. It's better 2,000 than 1 million. So there are a couple of examples here of uh, uh, different kinds of uh, region proposal algorithms. One of them that is very popular is selective search. And another one, that, so selective search would return you only bounding boxes. And then there's multi-scale combinatorial grouping, which also gives you segments. Um, so with this uh, region proposals, now it means that we have uh, a, a reduced set of locations in images where to look. So we can now just basically run deep learning on top of these uh, bounding boxes. So that's actually what uh, the authors of this uh, paper did in 2014, which is what was presented in CVPR. So there's this uh, network that they called RCNN, which is nothing uh, but a classification network, so AlexNet as it is. So what they did is fine tune AlexNet, but instead of inputting images, so you're classifying images, what they did is input this region proposal that they extracted for images. So you're basically classifying regions, which is what we did before, but now we have a deep net that does it. Um, okay, so in RCNN, uh, but this worked well, and we'll see now uh, later on uh, how was the performance on this. But RCNN has different stages, so they first trained this uh, deep network to classify regions, but then they used that network to extract features, and then they trained another uh, classifier on top of those, of those regions. So they trained a classifier to refine the classification, and they also try, uh, trained a bounding box regressor. That means that basically you want to adjust the, the, the coordinates of the bounding boxes because the region proposals are not perfect. So there's this uh, different uh, stages of uh, RCNN. So we can see the performance here. So if we look at the DPM, uh, the, the formal power model, so what's before deep learning, and we see how RCNN really increases the performance a lot. And uh, so you see as well that using AlexNet, you have like maybe 20 points of difference. But if you go to VGG16, which is much deeper, you get like 30 points of difference. So that's, that's actually, uh, yeah, a big, a big improvement. 
But RCNM has uh, some problems, right? So we kind of like suggested it before, but there's like three particular problems. So the first one is that it's very slow at test time. Because you, so you take an image and you compute all these object proposals, and then you want to detect objects there. So you need to slide, so forward each one of these proposals through the network and you get a classification. Then you get all these uh, scores, you put the threshold somewhere and you detect your objects, right? But that's very slow because you have to do that multiple times, at least 2,000 times for each proposal. The second one is that after you've done that, you extract features and you train uh, SVM. So you need to, like, there's two steps. First you extract features and then you have separate uh, SVMs or classifiers that uh, improve your results. So that's all, all, all very complicated, right? So we would like something that is nicer and it's trained end to end and you would like to get the results straight in a straightforward way. So that's how fast RCNN uh, came about. So it was just basically solving all the problems that RCNN had at the time. So problem number one, as I said, it was very slow at test time because you have all these regions that you need to forward through the entire network. So in faster CNN, this is done in a smarter way. So the idea here is to share the computation of convolutional layers across all regions. And how is that done? So you have your image, and instead of first extracting the regions and then sliding them one by one, so forwarding one by one through the network, what you do is you take the entire image and you perform all your convolutions. So, but in an image, so all the convolution, the convolutional layers see the whole image. And then when you've reached the last convolutional layer, you go there with your proposals and you work them so that uh, to scale them to the, to the convolutional layer, you perform some max pooling there to get a fixed size representation for each proposal. And from now on, you can classify as you did before. But the trick is here just to move the, this expensive procedure of going through all the proposals, you move it to later in the network. So since convolutions are very expensive, this is much faster now. So, and then uh, for the second two problems of RCNN is that, uh, so they trained a separate uh, SVM and a box regressor and they have this multiple stage uh, training. So this is solved in fast RCNN by just training it all together. So now the network doesn't have only one uh, output that uh, defines the, so it learns the class scores. It has two outputs, one that learns the class scores and another one that learns the uh, bounding box uh, regressed coordinates, okay? So this is trained end to end now. So if we look at the results, we see that uh, so faster RC, fast RCNN uh, is faster in training time compared to RCNN. It's faster at test time, and it's also better in performance. So it's all great, right? So we just solved everything. But turns out that not exactly, because now if we actually include the, the time that it takes to compute proposals, we see that this number doesn't look so well now, so we're not even close to, to real time. Fast RCNN is, is still faster, but it's not fast enough, you, you could say. So to solve this, there's a third iteration, so a third edition of this uh, trilogy, and I assure you that this is the last one. Uh, it's called Faster RCNN. Uh, so the idea here is that since the bottleneck of the, of the problem is the object, object proposal uh, computation, what you do here is just train the network to also predict the, the region proposals. And then once, once this is predicted, you can just classify them. So if you look at this uh, figure, you see that even though the, you know, the colors are different, just, this is just here, this is fast RCNN. So it's the same, nothing has changed. So the thing that they've done is just basically add a second branch that shares convolutional features with the classification branch that we already have. And this new branch predicts uh, bounding boxes, okay? So how does this work? I'll go into, into it a little bit. So you basically have your convolutional layer and from that layer, you want to extract uh, a set of bounding boxes, uh, box proposals. So you would uh, basically slide a three by three window through that uh, convolutional layer. And at each location, you want to predict if that location is uh, good for a bounding box or not. So if that is an object or not. So that's the first thing that you predict. And the second thing that you predict is this uh, bounding box uh, coordinates that are regressed. So you basically uh, what you predict is an adjustment to the original, so, so to, the, to the original uh, coordinates. So you do that for a single uh, three by three region, but also just to make things more complicated, they add this set of anchor boxes, which are the uh, different boxes that share the same center as this three by three region. But the, you, the, you, you only do this once. So you slide it once uh, using this three by three, but you, you predict for these K boxes one, at the same time. So that's supposed to be super efficient. So that's how this works. So this network predicts a set of, uh, so it gives uh, scores to each one of these regions at each position in the convolutional layer. So if we look at the numbers again, uh, we see that uh, there's a significant uh, speed up with respect to faster RCNN and of course with RCNN as well. 
and we see the performance uh, maintained, so that's uh, super good. But we're, so we have like uh, one image takes 0.2 seconds to run, which is not real time, really. Um, so we'll go into that and what other approaches are there uh, to solve this. So also I mentioned that fast RCNN, faster RCNN sorry, is the basis of the winners of COCO and uh, ImageNet object detection in 2015. But they just replaced DGG, which is what they use in the paper. They just replace it with ResNets, which we've seen that are super the best, the best thing now. So they get the, like a state of the art performance using that. So there's also other uh, approaches, just not related to RCNN or this trilogy of, of networks. So there's this one that's called YOLO, or you only look once. So here, the, the trick here is that you don't use uh, um, region proposals at all. So you just have your image, you divide it in a grid, a fixed grid. So here, you know, I think six by six or something like this. And for each one of these cells or these locations, you predict a set of bounding boxes that are more or less centered around that location. So you just predict that from beginning to end. There's no multiple stages when you first train for proposals and then you evaluate. So it's just, uh, you skip that step. So that actually they do it for, so that it's much faster. And we'll see later what are the, are the numbers here. There's also this other work, uh, which uh, it's basically the same idea. It's called single shot multi-box detector. So the idea is the same as, as YOLO. You don't use proposals. So you just take uh, your uh, image and you divide it somehow and you output um, boxes that relate to each position of this of this image or, or this grid. And the trick here is that YOLO did that for one single convolutional uh, filter. So and so it's one one thing. So a single set of, of predictions. And here what they do is combine outputs of different convolutional layers. So it means that it's it operates at multiple scales in a way. So it, it works better. Just spoiler. Uh, so here are the results. And so here they compare to faster CNN both with BGG and, and Ziller and Fergus uh, architectures. So we see, basically, the idea is that if you look at the, um, the time, so the F FPS um, column, you see that uh, YOLO and fast YOLO are much, much faster. But when you look at the performance, you see that it actually decreases quite a lot with respect to faster CNN. And if we look at the SSD um, uh, rows, we see that actually it's well, not as fast as fast YOLO, but it's quite, quite fast. So we're really close to real time. Uh, and the performance is maintained with respect to faster CNN, which is actually pretty, pretty good. So that's it, that's all. So here, as I did uh, yesterday, I've included some of the resources that I found. Basically, it's implementations of, this, uh, of these algorithms. So you will see that people in the object detection community like CAFE a lot. So most of these are implemented in CAFE. Uh, YOLO is the only one that is not. It's a different framework that the author, I guess, implemented. So he uses that. It's called Darknet. But there are a few ports in TensorFlow and Keras that I haven't tested, but they should work, I guess, if you want to try. So that's all.